Good morning, North Star family. Y'all ready to worship together this morning? Well, let's give it a shot. Here we go. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my hope. me now? All right, that wasn't Miss Macy's fault. I had didn't turn my belt pack on. I wasn't ready to say good morning. Good morning. I hope you're doing well this morning. As you can tell, Miss Starla is not here, which uh, is the best part of who I am today. I love my wife. I thank God for her. She is uh, leading worship. She just finished leading worship in uh, my home church, our home church, um, and uh, they had asked her to come and lead the worship for that Sunday. They're in transition. They're without a, a worship pastor. And, and uh, don't worry, she's not available. I made that. They, they, somebody put on Facebook, can she, can she fill that position? No, she cannot. She has a role. Amen. And we thank God for that. And I know that you miss her today. And, and thank God for Mark and this team. They are so capable of filling in. Yes, so thankful. 
And uh, I know she's thankful to have folks uh, that support and lead with us as they do. It's, isn't it awesome to have folks like this? And, uh, and so it's so good to see you today. I know we have, looks like mostly home folk today. We've got people still traveling, getting back in town, and others who've gone on ta- out of town for vacation. But uh, we do have a guest this morning. I recognized her this morning, met her. So I just want you to know this morning, if you're our first time guest, we have a, a gift for you this morning. Bryson, make sure she picks up this on the way out, okay? This is for Elena, and that way we can uh, make sure she gets some of this good old apple butter. Is that what we still give out, is apple butter? I think we're going to do something different in the fall. I don't know what we'll go to, but, but uh, I know I'm glad to see you today. Are you glad to be here today? And I hope today that you are excited about what God has for us today to teach us, to show us. Listen, I'm telling you, Sunday night was such a sweet, sweet spirit. It wasn't just the sweet, sweet ice cream that we had and uh, the sandwiches and all that. But I'm telling you, that was one of the sweetest times I've had with you. And I'm just thankful for it. And I know some were out of town and were not able to attend our time of fellowship and our, our update on the vision. And uh, listen, if you have any questions, you can contact me, ask me directly, and uh, I can give you any information that I have. Why don't you stand and just tell someone today, hey, I'm glad you're here, and praise the Lord. This is going to be Pastor Russ's favorite song of the day because we're going to have some O's coming up, okay? That's right. We're going to do <laughs> You know, I didn't realize when, when we wrote this song a few years ago that so many people were going to love it because of the O's. So, um, so anyway, well, let's, let's give it a shot. Oh, 
I love this song, this next song. Uh, we sometimes we for, we just forget that when we're in this environment, you know, it's not just about our own personal worship. Sometimes we 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 have screens and we have all these things now that sort of make everything so about me. And, you know, I think one of the beautiful things when this group comes together is the corporate worship, the, the worshiping and the, the blending together of all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our, our experiences that we bring into this place. And, you know, sometimes... We can sing a simple song just like, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy, Lord of all. And when we come together and we put all of our efforts and all of our, our praise into that, I just feel like the Holy Spirit is just so moving in that place and just in this place right now, you know, that's... I don't know. I mean, I I didn't plan to say all this, but maybe God did. But right now, we are in a really interesting time, I think, as a church body and as a family. And I think we're in an exciting time. And, you know, when we just say, Holy Spirit, come into this place. You're welcome in this place. You just come in and rule and reign and just be that that you are because you're holy. You know, this, this little song says, You are holy. Oh, so holy. You are holy, Lord of all. Just to tell the Lord that. You know, we just acknowledge His holiness and His presence in this place. Amen? Amen.
You may be seated as we prepare for our time each Sunday as we have time to pray together. As Mark said, there is before us such great opportunity. Do you believe that? Do you believe God has great opportunity before us? And uh, I know you've been praying and thank God that as we've always said, you've heard me say, and I'll continue to reiterate it just to remind us and remind me, nothing significant happens outside of prayer. Nothing. And, and I believe the reason why is because it, it forces us to enter into God's presence without any pretense. We just come and we lay it before Him. You know, I, I heard a statement. I was in a pastor's briefing on Thursday about a men's conference that's coming to our area in October and we'll have an opportunity to take our men. The one thing that I, I remember that was a statement that was made by one of the gentlemen, very intelligent, intellectual. And he said, he made this statement. He's an apologist. He made this statement that means giving a defense for the gospel. He made the statement that he learned in his life the most important thing he could do was surrender his reputation. What others thought about him. And I thought, you know, I could have, I heard a lot of preaching, but that was one of the most, I think, transparent statements of that day. He made a statement. It's not my intellect, it's not all the things that I even involved in. The, the one thing that I think I should be concerned about is if I could get to the point where I just surrender my reputation of what others think about me. And just think about what God knows about me. Amen. And I'm telling you, we're getting into the days ahead of us where our reputation should be, listen, Jesus. That's it. When people see us, they see the Lord. When they, when they hear about us, they can see God in us. And I pray that that's what he will do. So why don't you join me here at the altar this morning? We have many to pray for. Mark's mother, Dale's mother, Bill Lott. Gigi is in hospice care now. There's so many that we can pray for this morning. And if I've forgotten someone, please come and, and bring their name before the Lord today. But as we pray together, I'm asking you to pray, God, use me in the days ahead to make a difference, a greater difference for your kingdom. Let that be your prayer today. And I love what my brother said. Lord, come to the place where I surrender my reputation. You see, it's in Christ when we realize it's in Christ and in Christ alone. He's everything. He's our everything. Father, today, help us get to the place where we just become so honest in, in your presence, where we, we don't have pretense. God, we just simply are dependent on you. God, for everything. Everything. Your guidance, your provision. God, there are people right now I know that are struggling. They may not even be making it aware to anyone, but you know what they're struggling with is. God, you know the things that they're dealing with. And God, you know even the, the things that, that others may not know. But I have learned. my sweet counselor said to me one time he said always remember at your worst and even at your best God's love for you does not change 
because it's not based on conditions. God is holy. God's character is perfect. We fail him, we, we let him down, but he doesn't let us down. He holds us up. So, Father, today, for those who we're praying for, as you've heard me mention those names, God, as we bring them before you, God, knowing for some, they're about to enter into your presence. God, your timing is perfect. God, for those who are growing weary, God, I pray that you would give them the strength that they need to, to keep pushing on. God, as others surround them and, and help them. You have a way, Lord, of bringing the right, time, the, the right people at the right time in our lives. So I thank you for that today. Lord, today as we, we talk about being contagious with our faith. Bold faith is contagious faith. Someone else will be infected because of the faith that we have. Someone else will have hope because we have hope. Someone else will be forgiven because we have been forgiven. Someone else's marriage is going to be put back together because someone who had a broken marriage realized the, the key was you. And God, in a time of comfort, you can bring comfort to those. God, you can put the pieces back together even when we mess it up. And I'm thankful for that today. God, help us live in a way that is pleasing to you, that is blameless. God, we're not sinless, but we can become blameless. And I pray today as we, we talk about that contagious faith, Lord, help us today to realize contagious faith is sure, contagious faith is strong, and contagious faith is shared. Let us walk through that truth today and discover, Lord, the things that you want us to hear. We give you this time. We have an act of worship today, not just with our singing, but also with our, our hearing the word of God today. So we do that today. We receive it. Teach us through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, amen.
He is holy. He's worthy of our praise, isn't he? Well, take your Bibles and turn with me back to our, our text where we've been kind of starting in Hebrews chapter 11. We've been talking about bold faith over the last several weeks, and you got to hear a personal testimony of bold faith during this series. When I think about, again, this passage, and if we take a look here, it, it was, we look here in Hebrews chapter 11. Remember that word now by faith appears over and over again. And this week I was just reminded during this pastor's briefing I told someone, I, I, Mark, I, at the beginning of the, I was so inspired because, I, you know, I enjoy being preached to as well. And I was getting preached to and someone I'd never heard before preached that morning. Bishop Patrick Wooden from Raleigh, North Carolina, who now is uh, just a... We had some mutual friends, and, and uh, we discovered after he preached, and it was just a joy to hear him preaching. You know, there's, there's one thing about getting fired up. You know, if you've ever been preached to and you get fired up and you're ready, you're ready to fight hell with a water pistol. I mean, bring it on. And I was, I was, I was that way. I was, I was feeling inspired, I, and I looked at somebody and I said, I can't handle no more inspiration. I'm inspired. And then... I had one of the guys get up and and he he began to talk about the different things that we're facing and and uh, when we look at all the things that are surrounding us and and uh, just some reality. I went from being inspired. I told somebody I went from being inspired from being depressed and felt like in just one one day, man, it just felt heavy. It felt heavy in the room, and, uh, but it was truth. What it was speaking was truth, and it was culture, and it's the culture in which we live in now, and that's exactly why the, the timing of this message, I believe, is, is God's timing, because we're, we're living in a culture that needs hope. There's a lot of hurt going on around us, and we need to be contagious. We need to be contagious. Now, you know, we were concerned about being contagious, and we still are with, with the uh, SARS-2 virus that goes around and, and, um, and how that can, and we found that the, at the beginning of it was highly contagious and all these people were getting it. It was tr being transmitted through close contact, contact and and so we were trying all these things. And I got to thinking about Christians. And do we have the same intensity? Do we look at being in the battle and close, close proximity to people and, and, and to where our life will affect theirs? Our hope will become their hope. And I pray that it will today. So look with me here in... Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. But before we do that, before we read, and I will tell you this, after I heard some of the statistics about, I was telling Mark about this at the beginning of the, of the service today. I said, Mark, you know the one thing about the Christian worldview and, and how people say they have a Christian worldview. They say, yeah, we, we're evangelical. Can I tell you, that, that term really doesn't mean what it used to mean today, by the way. Matter of fact, I don't mean any disrespect, but I do want you to know, I believe it's a junk term in the sense of what it used to mean. The purpose of the being evangelical was that other people of like-mindedness that would, would meet at the foot of the cross and what the cross stood for, that Jesus died on the cross, that his death, was redemption for the world. 
He was the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? There is no other way. And that's where people from Methodist and Presbyterian, Assembly of God, Church of God, could meet there and say, we're evangelical. We believe that. But unfortunately today, we've had denominations crumble. Because I can tell you, denominations are not the answer. Jesus is the answer. And the reason those crumble is because it's not because denominations are bad. It's because we depart from the truth. And if you look at the world and you look at the, even the denominations that have fallen, that have fallen apart, and they have all done it from within. They have lost holding on to the truth of God's Word. So today, it gives me great pleasure as you stand in honor of God's Word today to affirm the Word of God because the one thing I want you to know, I will affirm this Word. You will never have to worry where your pastor stands when it comes to the Word of God. Amen? And that's why I enjoy doing this. Listen, I know it probably comes across old-fashioned and, and uh, I don't know, but I know this. I want to surrender my reputation. I'm really not concerned if it impresses someone. I'm really not concerned. I just want people to know I believe it. Amen. So would you affirm the Word of God with me today? I believe the Bible is the Word of God. Every word of it is true. I will receive it gladly. For what the Bible says differs from my thinking and practice. With God's help, I'll change. I pray that we will. Look with me here at our text today. And then we'll walk through this message on what it means to have contagious faith. You see, I believe there are three elements today. We talked about them. Contagious faith is sure, it is strong, and it is shared. And you're going to see, you see all through Hebrews chapter 11. Now by faith, now by faith, can I tell you every incident that that happened, their faith affected someone else. Their lives were changed. Lives around them were changed. Culture was changed. Environments were changed. Families were changed. Marriages were changed. Look at verse 6. This is, our, this is our foundation really for today. Now without faith, it is impossible to please God. This, remember, this has been our, kind of our foundational. It is impossible to please God. For the one who draws near to him, do not miss this. This is one of the most important parts right here. Must believe that he exists. If you're going to take time to draw near to him, if you're going to take time to, to, to take it out of your schedule, then when you show up, expect God to show out. Amen? Believe. What do you believe? Well, he exists. And he rewards those who seek him. It don't get any better than that, does it? He, listen, he rewards those who seek him. He has told us, if you'll knock, it'll be open. If you'll seek, you'll what? You'll find. I'm telling you, God is not a mystery. God has made himself known to mankind. Mankind has rejected him among the other world religions around. But here's the truth. Here's the truth. For God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? His son. His only son. Tony Perkins was in that meeting the other day. And Tony is the president of Family Research Council. You've probably read some of the material that they've generated over the years. And matter of fact, Tony was instrumental years ago in creating the Covenant Marriage Act that exists in his home state of Louisiana. Miss Starla and I were actually married under that covenant marriage. Which means you can't just go get a divorce because you choose to. Matter of fact, 
by law, the Louisiana law, doesn't permit it only under certain grounds. Guess where the grounds are? Biblical grounds. Biblical grounds. And, and it, it is a covenant, not a contract. You see, today we have people who, they just got into a contract, right? They never had a covenant before God. And it breaks God's heart. But I'm telling you today, for us to be contagious, but one of the things that Tony, as he was standing there, he was holding his little grandbaby. This little baby, I think he's probably six months old, maybe a little older. Not, I remember seeing him on the Karis works now at the Grove where the, where the uh, conference was being hosted, and she was over there gathering up this little, little baby and taking care of him during the conference. But Tony was up there, and that baby grabbed him. I'll never forget looking at Tony, but most of all, looking at that baby. That's his granddaddy. And Tony would be standing there, and, and that grandbaby would look up at him. And Tony looked back down at him. And that grandbaby would smile at Tony. Let me tell you something. There's nothing like when a baby looks in your eyes like that, why I tell you that? Because Tony couldn't do what God did. Tony couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I couldn't give my Jackson. I couldn't give my Emmy. I couldn't give my Addie for anyone because I'm not God. So when we think about what makes Christianity so real. What makes Christianity so important is the fact God so loved he gave. And he gave his only son. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you that our faith should be so contagious that those around us, God, they will see it, they will sense it, they will know the hope that we have because it's real. It's not a crutch. God, it's real. There's no such thing as an eternal dirt nap as some have called it. Heaven is real. Hell is real. You've never sent anyone to hell. People have rejected your free gift. So God, today I pray that we would live a life that's so contagious. Our bold faith would be contagious faith. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Mark. When we think about this whole idea of contagious faith, as you see, we just read this, it's impossible to please God. The one who draws near must believe that he exists and reward, rewards those who seek him. I wrote this question down, and as I wrote this question down, I'm telling you, I meditated on it and meditated on it and thought about it time. I mean, that, listen, I, I thought about this, this probably for about 35 to 40 minutes when I wrote this down. And here's the question. Whose life has been changed, changed because of mine? Whose life has been changed because of mine? The reality is today, folks, we, we can't turn. If we claim to have Jesus and, and, um, as a part of our life, and he's on our lips, and, and you know, we, we put stickers on our cards, and I, I'm glad you put them on there, and, and I do my best to drive uh, good, but I know I don't always do that. And I've probably had people, you know, look at where North Star Family Church is and say, I'll never go there because of, and it wasn't Miss Starla. It was me. It, but I'm getting better. I'm recovering. It, I, I, I feel like I'm getting better with, with, with talking to people when they drive. Bo, do you have that issue? Do you talk to people when you drive? 
I didn't ask you to look at Debbie. I, I'm asking <laughs> communication right here. I know what she's going to say. You see, what we have, the, we talk to people as if they can hear us, but they, they don't hear us. Never forget one time, and, and you know, I, I shared this with you. When we think about whose life has been changed because of mine, you know, witnessing is, when we think about witnessing, people say, well, I, I, I can't witness because I've never been trained to witness. Well, witnessing is not something you do. It's something you are. Don't ever forget that. Witnessing is not something you do. It's something you are. You are either a witness for Jesus. You're either drawing people to him or you're pushing a pe people away from him. We don't get a choice when it comes to that. The, really what happens, I, well, I shouldn't say we don't get a choice. It's how we live that makes a difference. So the thing I want you to see today, the first thing I want you to really focus on today is contagious faith is sure. Contagious faith is sure. It has to be sure. Matter of fact, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, this is what it says. It says, I've written these things unto you who believe in the name of the Son of God. Notice that. Who believe in the name of the Son of God. So that you may what? Know that you have eternal life. That is the foundation of a Christian faith. Is having an understanding, a knowledge that when we call on his name, when we say, as, as in Romans chapter 10, verse 3, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, people say, you know, I, I, when I first heard that word, not being raised in church and just raised around churches, raised around the Baptist church, I was raised around the Methodist church, the Presbyterian church, but never heard the gospel. Y'all know my story. But the reality is, I didn't know what the word saved meant. I didn't know what saved meant. I, I thought, saved from what? I mean, who am I saved from, you know? And then I went to church and I thought, that's who I'm saved from. No, I'm just kidding. But saved is a term that we don't understand many times. We don't get it. And, and, and that's why people look at us and they go, I don't understand what... Th the reality is, is it's redeeming us and keeping us from getting what we deserve. Well, that's what we're saved from ourselves. Because the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death... But the gift of God is eternal life. If we always stop there and understand this, God made, it, made a way for us to be saved. And that's why it's so important that when our faith, it is sure. That when someone comes to faith in Christ, it says, these things I've written unto you who believe in the name of the Son of God that so that you may know that you have eternal life. Contagious faith is sure. Because you can know. It's not something that you guess about, and here's how we can know. You see, we're told that we can know, but we can also, we can, it can be seen in transformation. And you know this is one of my life verses, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is what? In Christ. That doesn't say in church. But I think a lot of people read that. Well, if you're in church, you're safe. Good for you. No, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new what? Creation. Old things pass away. Behold, look, they pass away. And look, new things have come. I love how that says, how it says, and look, new things have come. You've heard me say it for years. If there's been no change, there's been no Jesus. That's why contagious faith has to be Sure. Contagious faith is guaranteed by a life change. New creation. Old things pass away. Behold, look, all things become new. That's a process that God takes us through. We call it what? Sanctification. Justification is when he died for us. We were justified because Jesus died for us in our place. That's why we don't have to take the penalty of our sin... We've been justified because he did it. The penalty has been paid. And once somebody, listen, in our judicial system, once a penalty is paid, that penalty has been paid for. They're either set free or they've done their penalty. But we, we, we have now an attitude, in our, even in our judicial system and even in our culture today, somebody could pay a penalty and they could still be in bondage. I, I know it got quiet right there, didn't it? You know, what I, you know what I'm saying? We, we have a culture today that goes beyond. They don't, they don't think that way. 
But aren't you glad that God didn't say, okay, I paid your penalty. Uh-oh, hang on. I caught you on a technicality. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. No, no, no. I've been watching what people have been saying about you on Facebook. Nope. I'm not going to have anything to do with you. Aren't you glad God doesn't operate like that? You see, we've been justified because it is a sure thing. Why is it sure? Because he justified us. He changes us. He, he, he gives us this opportunity for old things to pass away. Now, if old things don't pass away, there's been no Jesus. Maybe people were, when they read that, they thought, well, if I'm in church, I'm okay. How many people have you known it before? That, that's the first thing they'll tell you, where they go to church instead of their relationship with God. It's a telltale sign. People talk more about where they go to church than they do of their relationship with God. I'm telling you, it's about your relationship with God, not where you go to church. Where you go to church is going to be evidence because of your relationship with God, but we can't have it backwards. We have to know, sir, that it, therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, and look, all things have come new. Understand this. When we get saved, God gets our heart. That's when our heart begins to transform. And out of the heart, we think differently. We begin to view things differently because we're, we're viewing things from the heart, the lens in our heart, right? And uh, you've heard me say it. I, I said it before. If I could get what's in my head to go through my heart before it came out my mouth, I'd be better off. You see, I, sometimes I say what's in my head, and it never hits my heart, and I'm in trouble. Because what do we do? Well, we tell people what we think. And when that's in, <laughs> that doesn't work out sometimes, tell people what we think, because it shows how much we know when we tell people what we think. So when we think about this whole idea of it being sure, I think the, the, the reality is, is that this whole idea is... It is sure because we know it. Let me give you a couple of examples. These two examples are companies that, that I, I just think about that have changed. One has changed the world. One company has changed the world. And you and I have been, been a part of that. And that is Apple. He said, Pastor Russ, what do you mean they've changed the world? They have changed the world. One of the most amazing things when I began to just study a little bit about Apple, and, and I'm not, understand this, I, by the way, I'm not on the board, and I'm not selling any Apple stock. Uh, I'm just making clear or, or making reference to the very fact that the iPhone has changed the world. Whether you like it or not, that doesn't, doesn't matter. You could say, I hate the iPhone. That's fine. You say, I'm an Android person. That's fine. That doesn't, that doesn't change the fact that this device has changed the world. And I'll, and I'll just show you some reasons why. Um, do you know today that I opened my... I, well, I'll get to that in just a second. I'm, have you kind of thinking what is it going to say? <laughs> You're going to be thinking about that the whole time. But think about this. When, when you think about the iPhone, one, the author of this, this uh, article... He says, I, 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 my iPhone is the first thing I see in the morning after the alarm wakes me up. Sure enough, 4 o'clock this morning, this thing went off. It is the first thing I see. Now, one of the things I was convicted about is, is my Bible is in, in, my, in the den in, next to a chair. And, and, and this is not being legalistic. I'm just telling you, I, I, this was just kind of in my mind, I thought... You know, I ought to look at things a little differently. But my Bible is in, in the den next to a chair that I like to sit in because it rocks. And I like to rock when I read my Bible. Sounds good, doesn't it? The reality is it's not the first thing I see. So I got to thinking, I thought, you know, if I'm going to put God first, why don't I put my Bible next to my bed? Not saying that your, 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 Bible, your phone can't wake you up. And not say, listen, I even have Bible apps on my phone. What I probably ought to do is when I look at this after I'm woke up, I uh, have been made a, 
aware of what's going on, I'm awake, maybe my Bible app should come on and say, hey, dummy, start reading. <laughs> this phone has changed the world. And I'll tell you why. The iPhone was released in 2007, and the dawn of a decade, it relatively a niche product and confined to one wireless carrier that targeted the early technology adapters. That means the people who were into technology, they, they thought, oh, this, we, we understand what this is. See, it took, took some of you a long time. You're still using the flip phone to realize. <laughs> I, my, my, listen, my uncle still has a flip phone. He still got, that thing works fine. There ain't nothing wrong with it. But understand this, in 2007, this product was released. In 2010, Apple sold 8.7 million phones. 8.7. That's a lot of phones, isn't it? The first quarter of 2018, Apple sold 47 million phones. That's a lot of phones. But all combined, Apple has sold worldwide at least 1.4 billion phones during the decade, according to its own official sales and figures. It's probably closer to 1.6 after this year's estimates are added. Apple says 900 million phones are still active. Now, we were just in the billions. It's a trillion-dollar company, but it has changed the world. There are companies that have been changed as a result. This company, listen, the size of this company, iPhone obviously started, or Apple started as a company that had an MP3 player. What did we call that? It was called a what? Op iPad, or iPod, excuse me, iPod. How many of you still have an iPod? How many of you have the, the one that you put on your, your arm and you go jogging? What did we call that? It, it wasn't the Nicorette patch, it was... Oh, nano. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> About the size of it. <laughs> we put that thing on, go jogging. It, it wasn't that, but understand this. It is a $1 trillion company with 137,000 employees. Apples, the phone has changed the world. Today, I opened my garage with this phone. Today, I do banking on this phone. Today, we do the service on this phone. Today, we do things all around us on this phone. This phone, this company has changed the world. Realize this. There are people today that have companies that have started because of the phone. You could have GPS on this phone. You could actually have an app called Grubhub. Somebody knows about Grubhub in this room. I'm sure Grubhub can help you even get a biscuit delivered to North Star Family Church. Why? We have technology to do that from this phone. Apple has changed the way that we live. Apple has changed. Now, you say, no, 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 Pastor, not me. I'm not one of those people. Oh, yes, you are. Because, see, if you've got this phone, matter of fact, Apple now, if you do a little screen, little little, this little thing down here, you can pull it and show how much screen time. It's now tracking how much time you use the phone. It shows how much time you've been on the phone and how much time you need to break. <laughs> it has changed the world. Companies like Grubhub, companies like Waze are now multi multi-million dollar companies as a result of this technology. You see, they took the technology that was there and they said, I want a part of that. And, and, and I'm not here promoting whether this is good, bad, or indifferent. I'm just telling you it has changed the world. And why do I say that? Because isn't it sad that a phone has changed the world and not the church. Isn't it sad that we as Christians have not have the same kind of faith that is so contagious? We don't have to have a technology. We have the Word of God. And if we've got the Word of God living and active inside of us, we should too be able to change the world. I hope that we'll take that in consideration. That it isn't just Apple who can change the world, but God's people through God's work can change the the world. One of my favorite companies, though, not, listen, Apple, 
the one thing that you have to know about Apple is there's no question what kind of company they are. They're a marketing company that markets technology. They believe in their culture. They believe in their culture. When you walk into an Apple store, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Everything's white. Everything is bright. Everything looks like it's ready to be bought, right? We just don't have the money to buy everything on the shelves. But it's like, come on in, right? And you got these, you got these young men and young women who are there. How may I help you? And, and they got their lanyard zone and their badges. And, the, you know, they want to get you over here. And, yes, I'll be glad. They are making sure they believe in that culture. And why do I say that again? Because I'm telling you. We need to be contagious as Christians that our faith is so sure that we believe in it. My favorite company, though, is the Baptist Bird. That is Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Chick-fil-A is anointed from on high. Our beloved brother from another mother, Mr. Kathy, I'm telling you, walking the streets of gold, singing with the angels of old, he is looking down and seeing the Baptist bird doing really well. You see, again, this is another company when I think about, when I think about. And some of you are wishing right now they were open on Sunday. But hey, that's why God uses them so much. Amen? Because they believe what they believe. How much pressure has been said to them over the years? You need to open up on Sundays. No, nope. no thank you. Do you realize they have one of the greatest business models promoted around the world? Chick-fil-A has been asked to go around the world and promote that business model to other world countries because it not just works, it changes people's lives. You say, how does a chicken company change people's lives? I'll tell you. Number one, they teach value-based culture. They are value-based. They are, listen, they are in the people business, not the chicken business. They just sell the chicken. They serve the people. They need, as a matter of fact, write that down. They don't just sell chicken. They serve the people. One of the most interesting things about Chick-fil-A, that they're the most selective company accepting only 0.4% of the people who apply. Very selective, isn't it? Their values lead them. They teach servant leadership. And even on, from their, their website, you can read these words. We're here to serve. We're better together. We're purpose-driven. What's next? That's Chick-fil-A's motto. And when I think about Apple and how technology has changed the world around the world... And I'm telling you, if you read the scripture, God did the very same thing with a few men and women who, who became so consumed with the word of God and so on fire with the word of God. I think about Meshach and, uh, Shack and Abednego and how Shadrach, she, Meshach, I'll get it out of this. I can't get it. I just wanted to say I almost cussed. I'm just glad I didn't. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, okay? And it's time to go. Are you still with me? Just make sure you're still with me because I, I, I'm just on the first point. I'm just making sure you're still with me. So when we think about our core values that are on the wall, this is why it is so important that consuming faith and, and really contagious faith is sure. We should be sure about everything that we believe and teach and follow. It shouldn't be a mystery. And if Chick-fil-A can do it with a piece of chicken, then we can do it with the Word of God. Amen? If Apple can do it with a phone to help people's lives even better or for worse, whatever you want to say. But the fact of the matter is you can't deny it has changed people's lives. And you can't deny those people who are on fire for Jesus can change the world. Why? Because it's Contagious faith is sure. You see, when we think about our own core values, live boldly, love deeply, follow faithfully, those are the things that we should never depart from.
So when people look at us, they know for sure that when the people of North Star, they believe in living boldly. They believe in loving deeply. They believe in following faithfully. Why? Because, see, it is the work of Christ that redeems us. It is the Word of God that guides us. And it is the life of the Holy Spirit that empowers us. That's worth saying again. Amen. It is the work of Christ that redeemed us. It is the Word of God that guides us. And is the life of the Holy Spirit to empower us. That empowers us. Contagious faith is not only sure, but contagious faith is strong. It is strong. Why is it strong? And here's really the reason why it's strong. It is authentic. It is authentic. And that's really what people are looking for today. I wrote it down like this. People don't care what we say when how we live doesn't match. Lee Strobel, if you've never, if you've never heard about Lee Strobel who Lee, Lee is. Because here's what Paul said in Galatians chapter, 20, two, ch chapter 2, verse 20. He says, no longer I live. He says, I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by what? Faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So Paul says that for in order for my life to be strong and authentic, I have to understand where my, where my life has to be, it has to be buried with Christ. I can no longer be on the throne of my own life. I'm no longer self-serving. Now I am being, what? Covered by who Jesus is. I'm now being sanctified. I'm becoming better day by day because of my relationship with God. In 1 in first Timothy chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, it says this. This is a trustworthy and deserving Full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's good news. And he says, I am the worst of them. But I receive mercy for this reason. So that in, in me, the worst of them, Jesus might demonstrate his extraordinary patience as an example to those who, what? Would believe in him for eternal life. You see, it's got to be strong in the way that it's strong is when we realize it's authentic. The first thing is authentic. Lee Strobel, many of you may have un, uh, read his books, The Case of Christ and The Case for Faith. Lee Strobel was a reporter for the Chicago Tribune. And he began attending Willow Creek in the early 1980s. And really, in a, in a, it was just an effort to appease his wife. This is coming from the book, Contagious Christianity, that was written several years ago. I was reading it this week and, and came across this, the story about Bill, uh, about Lee Strobel. You see, Lee walked into this place, and, and uh, his wife, Leslie, had, had just gotten saved. And when he walked into the church as a skeptic, an unbeliever, this is what he said. He said, my hypocrite or my people that are hypocrites, that, my, that antenna popped up in my head. I was scanning the place for signs of people who were just playing church. In fact, I was aggressively on the lookout for phonies. There's one right there. You know, not, not really. I was just giving the example. Don't get nervous. But the fact of the matter is he was just looking through the room and, and, and then he, he thought just for a second, if I could just find one, I would find an excuse for rejecting the church on the grounds of hypocrisy. I could feel free to reject Christianity as well. It turned out Lee discovered the opposite. He found that the church to be filled with people who were sincere, their efforts to figure out what it means to please God and follow Christ in their daily life. You see, these weren't perfect people. These were just people who were authentic. They knew they had junk in their trunk. They knew they had problems. They knew they had pain. They knew they had broken lives. But the reality was is Lee saw them as people who were authentic. You see, if we'll just live authentic in front of people, even with our lives in a messed up situation, I believe God will use it even with people, even allowing us to be authentic in that faith. Not only should it be authentic, but it should be abiding. It's not just 
authentic faith. It's abiding faith. That's what makes it strong. Matter of fact, John chapter 15, Jesus said this, I am the true vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces what? Much fruit. Because you can do nothing without me. Look at that last part of that verse. Jesus said, you can do nothing without me. I wrote it like this. When life is in the root, others will see the fruit. When life is in the root, others will see the fruit. Because, the, listen, life comes from the root. It, it comes from the vine. We're the branches. It, and when you cut that off, remember, there's no more life. I had some limbs that fell out of the tree this weekend. My dad's out there picking up the little limbs, and I looked out the window and said, Dad, it got some big limbs now you got to pick up. Well, that branch no longer has life in it. It's just a dead branch. Why? That branch is lying there on the ground, understanding this. It will never become alive because it's not attached anymore to life anymore. And the only way that our faith can remain strong is if we remain in Him. So a contagious faith, it is, it is sure. A contagious faith, it is strong. But look at the last thing. Contagious faith, it is shared. Contagious faith, it is shared. Matter of fact, we read this again. We've seen this story before, and I brought it to you before. When Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in your sight or of God for us to listen to you rather than God, you decide. But he says, we want you to understand, Peter and John says, we're unable to stop speaking about what we've just seen and heard. You see, that's what I'm talking about. When your faith is so real, when your faith is so sure, and your faith is so strong, I can tell you, your faith will be shared. It's not an issue of, if, if, well, I've got to go take this course. I've got to figure out how to do this. I've got to figure out how to please this group of people. I've got to know when I can't use these words. Friend, let me tell you something. Everything, everything, you're not going to agree with the world if you're walking with Jesus Matter of fact, the closer we walk with Jesus, the out of more out of touch we're going to get or be in tune with the world. Jesus said you can't love both. You can't love me and love the world. But I'll tell you this, when we start loving Jesus in this way, contagious faith is shared. He said we can't stop speaking. Understand what these men went through. These men went through persecution. They'd been locked up. They'd been put in jail. What happens if you and I are locked up or put in jail? What happens if you and me have been persecuted? Trust me, I believe the day is coming where that will be the case. We have been living in a time of, I believe, when people have easy believers, and we've heard that word for years. But notice what Romans chapter 15 says. Now... May the God of hope fill you with his joy, all joy, and peace as you believe in him so that you may, what? Overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Notice that. Contagious faith is overflowing faith. You see, when you're full of it, it comes out of you. That means when you feel the hope and you know the hope and you have a sure hope, it's going to come out of you. It's not going to be disguised or it's not even going to be hard for it to even come out. So I'll tell you this. When you're full, when it's full, it will overflow. Do you believe that today? Do you believe when it's full, it will overflow? I do. And also, I believe it's a matter of the heart. And that's why I believe the more we love God, the more we'll love others. And that's because we have a story to share. The thing about contagious faith, it is, it's sure. I know it. I'm telling you today, I know that I have faith in God. Somebody can't talk me out of it. I know that we can be, there can be people who make fun of us. There can be people who say, you know what? That God that you, that you preach about, he's just narrow-minded. You know, isn't it amazing how people will say that, and yet they forget God so loved that he gave. And he said, whoever should come, whosoever, that don't sound narrow-minded to me, does it? You see, he gets accused for things he doesn't even say. Why? Because they have a message that they don't know. But I promise you, when they surrender and receive, and you may be watching today online, 
You may be here in this room today, but if you're watching online today and you say, hey, I've never received Jesus as my Savior, but I'd like to today. Would you bow your heads with me? Close your eyes. Church, I'm telling you, what we need to realize today is this. Why can't we change this world? Why isn't it not your desire in your life that to, be, to be a world changer? God, I'm going to be a world changer. I want to change this world. Well, friend, it won't happen if your faith is not sure. It won't happen if your faith is not strong. But I'll tell you, it will happen because those two things, your faith will overflow. It will begin to share with others. And if you're watching today online, you say, Pastor, that's me. I don't know this God that you speak of, but I'd like to. I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray with me right now. And understand this. I understand what it means to be lost and without a Savior. I understand what it means to, to feel empty. I do. And I want you to understand, I'm not making any promises to you that your life will get better just because of God. I'm telling you this, it is impossible to please God without faith. But I can tell you, I know your life will be complete. I had things happen in my life, and I think sometimes even pastors sometimes lie to people, not intentionally, obviously. Well, if you come to Jesus, all your problems will be solved. No, friend, that's not true. I got some dear friends who today, their marriages are in trouble. They came to Jesus. I got friends today, listen, their children are in trouble. They came to Jesus. I got friends today, their finances are in trouble. They came to Jesus. But I'm telling you this, it doesn't mean that Jesus didn't keep his word. Jesus kept his word the whole time. Because he walks with us every step of the way. So I want to tell you right now, as you pray with me, you're praying by faith to receive him. Something like this. I'm going to pray a prayer. It's not me praying, but it's you praying. Would you pray with me right now? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Jesus, today I realize I'm a sinner. And I cannot save myself. Jesus, today I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that. And by faith, I believe that you were risen from the grave. I believe that. Now by faith I turn from my sin. I repent. And I turn to you. Thank you for hearing my prayer and saving me right now. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. But if you just prayed with me and you're in this room, would you just look at me? Anyone at all? Hey, that's me. I, I prayed with you today. If you're watching online today and you say, I prayed with you today. Listen, would you do me a favor? Would you do me a favor and just let us know? We'd love to put a Bible in your hand, get some literature to you, how you can walk with God. We'd love for you to be here in person. So we could put our arm around you and hug your neck, shake your hand, let you know that you're valuable, that you're loved. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity as we leave this place today. God, as we give you our best, God, let us be so contagious that people, they do not and they will not forget us because the hope that is in us comes out of us through the overflowing. In Jesus' name I pray. Won't you stand our feet as our team leads us out today.